Okay, I didn't expect to be making this video when I woke up this morning, uh, and I pride myself and this channel on being non-denominational, not political. Uh, it, it's a place for everybody, no matter what your beliefs. But if I didn't say something about what I'm gonna be talking about, I feel like that's much worse than actually saying it. So here I am, I position myself in my library. You can see I've got a lot of James Bond books and a ton of Ian Fleming books, lots of versions of the James Bond books by Ian Fleming, including these wonderful tattered paperbacks that I brought to all different locations, beaches, you have them as well. And what I wanted to talk to you today was about a few articles that came out speaking about this 70th anniversary of Casino Royale and the fact that there's a celebration coming, that Ian Friendly Publications are bringing out the books in both e-version, physical version, UK uh, covers, as well as US covers. There was a lot of excitement around this, and I was a part of that, until we heard that the books had been filtered through a group of sensitivity readers. I've never heard that term before, but essentially because of that, and then there were certain things in the James Bond books that were deemed sensitive to certain individuals, they've actually rewritten some of the James Bond books, pieces of the James Bond book. Um, they took out some offensive terms. They took out what would be offensive to people, some of the uh, vernacular and the descriptions. And I'm here to tell you, I don't agree with this. I just don't. Here's the reality. And for many, many reasons that I'm going to talk about. First of all, the books were written in 1950. I know that sounds like an excuse. Eh, it's the 1950s, a different lens, a different person, a different time. But truly, they were written in the 1950s by a particular individual. And because of that, it's not just fiction. It's a part of history. It's a part of how one artist, if you will, one author, believed in describing certain things about this very fallible anti-hero, this kind of son of a bitch spy, if you will, that was not a perfect individual. And because of that, there are what would certainly be in 2023 eyes, certain offensive things. But that's been part of the study of James Bond. That's been a part of the spice of us talking about it. I have on my own channel many, many conversations that you've all consumed where we have people from all different walks of life, different genders, different proclivities, different races, talking about what they read and how it's such a disconnect to today. But it's part of our discussion. The fact that we're intelligent people, we're adults. And even Ian Fleming himself said that his books way back then were not made for children. They're not made for young people. So for these things to be changed today, because of individuals that would be sensitive to some of these things or to attract younger readers, it's a disconnect. It's, it's a misstep in my purview. Then, of course, you've got to go back to the fact that things were cherry picked. And I don't quite understand why some things were taken out and other things weren't. Um, some of the homophobic or what would be deemed homophobic Today, uh, some of the uh, misogyny is all still in there. And yes, even some racism uh, and anti-Semitism to certain individuals, it's still in there. So it seems like not only has this been a bit cherry picked, I would say, don't worry about the cherry picking. Just don't do anything. Don't change what the author originally had intended. It is like changing art. And and by the way, I know this started a while ago. Remember, Greedo shot first, which was kind of innocent. You know, they didn't want Han Solo to appear to be a bad guy and shoot first, you know, because people ooh, would, would get crazy. You know, kids would, their, their heads would blow up. But here's the thing. I, I grew up on Star Wars. I grew up on Ian Fleming. I think I turned out to be a pretty good, open-minded individual. So if we're thinking that this is going to send people into a tizzy or that it's needed to attract 
new readers that have been avoiding this, I'm telling you right now, I know a lot of people that are very much with the modern times in their sensibilities that have drank these things in and either not been offended or could intelligently evolve that this is a piece of work from the 1950s from an author that was talking about a spy and it has transformed. Look at the movies that we have today. They have evolved and transformed. So instead of Instead of bashing that moment, instead of bashing the whole 007, yeah, I'm, I'm flying the numbers today for a particular reason, why don't we applaud the series and applaud James Bond and, and the books today for being a sign of the times, just like these were the sign of the times for the 1950s? I think this is a big mistake. And by the way, there are so many other ways you could do this. First of all, Keep it the same, and in the very beginning, have a little statement that said, very much like that you were posting, there are some things in this book that may be sensitive to certain individuals, just as a heads up. It talks about bink, 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 bink. Call it out in one page in the very beginning, and then we're off to the races. That's one way to do it. And, and by the way, worse comes to worse, you could have two versions. I mean, I guess... If I was forced, you could straddle that line of two different versions. One that was this sort of whitewashed version of, of what it could be. And then the original version, because you have a fan base and your fan base just isn't what you think it is. It's not just me, right? You know, you look at me, gray haired, I get it. You know, here I am pontificating to this, you know, screaming at the clouds coming. But it's not just me. I have friends in this Bond community of all different colors, shades, likes, proclivities, dangers, the whole works, and they all love James Bond. And we get to talk about it. We get to talk about what connects to us, what disconnects to us from the readings. I have a book club that's done this. We literally went through all of the books and had these discussions intelligent discussions, and we all remained friends in the end. So why? Why are we suddenly bringing out these large sensitivity brushes? So that could be the end of the video, but it's not the end of the story. So let me explain. Not too long ago, Ian Fleming Publications themselves reached out to me to engage my channel to be a part of the 70th year celebration. Obviously, I, I was excited. I wanted to be a part of the celebration. They were going to have me launch uh, one of the covers for your eyes only on my channel. It'd be exclusive, etc. And by the way, I know we tend to demonize situations very easily, actually, and demonize moments. But I will tell you, the people that I've dealt with are very nice people. They are. They're very communicative. I think that they made this choice because of a legacy choice versus um, a, a business or capitalistic choice. I think they're trying to protect the legacy name. I think they're, they're doing it for what they think are the right reasons. You've heard my opinion. I don't, think it's, I don't think it's the right thing to do. So if by some strange circumstance, anybody from the Ian Fleming Publications Group is watching this, I would say this, the most important thing that we have in our life as very fallible people, and I'll include myself in that wholeheartedly. I make 10 to 20 mistakes a day, stupid ones at that. But it's important for us when we make mistakes or we do something, it's important to embrace, to hug that part of our soul that does something ugly, even sometimes to ask for forgiveness. But we're not going to know what those ugly things are unless we have them to reflect on. And that's part of what we are talking about here. It's not a bunch of people clutching at their pearls, just saying like, protect my bond at all costs because it's, it's the right thing to do. No, we're talking about the fact that we've all learned from this. My book club over the last two years has been about learning and talking and having these conversations. But you can't embrace the ugliness unless you see it and unless you have it. And now we're talking about creating this false sense of beauty that wasn't there from the artist to begin with. And it just rings hollow. That's my opinion on this. So 
I would love to be a part of the 70th year anniversary and celebration. Still, I would love to get these books into new readers hands and for people that haven't encountered James Bond, but I want them to be able to embrace the ugliness that we see in 2023. Let's keep it all in there. It was the intent of the time. And although it doesn't connect to our sensibilities, I think it's going to create a better conversation than the one we've now created because of this whitewashed version. So Ian Fleming Publications, help me help you. Help me help you. Help me help you by thinking about some of the different ways that we can go about this that I offered earlier in the video. I leave that to you. I leave that to all of us. In the meantime, we've got some good books to read. This has been David Zeritsky for The Bond Experience. We'll see you all real soon. Take care. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from The Bond Experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information, plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you, just because we know you. Talk to you soon.